heart's creatures. Well, so be it. Think of Alice. You come first. to kill too quickly. Well, I never had your blind faith in anybody, including God. some roots and onions and things in the sack. Good. I'll start a stew. If we'd left him alone out there, he'd have died natural from exposure. I say he's come tracking us down and we're gonna have to kill him. Outside, son, unconscious. Who are you is the main question. Well, my name's Scott Lance, and I have a ranch down near Morro Coyle. I was taking a shortcut through the Badlands. I, I stopped to get some water. It must have been bad because it made me sick. Last thing I remember, I was falling. That's it. How do you feel now? Terrible. Stomach feels awful. I feel like a thousand head of cattle rode right over me. Try a little of this broth here. It'll make you feel better. Thank you. Let's eat. We pray for the well-being of our visitor and give thanks for today's sustenance. Amen. Good. Uh, very uh, unusual. Well, it's better than nothing, which is what we had yesterday. Thank you. 
burning up. <laughs> the people plan to settle around here? No, we were on our way to Canada. Well, how did you get stuck here? That's our concern. Well, that may be, but right now you're in sad shape. Have you got any medicine? We have prayer. Look, you can't stay here. That boy, he's got desert fever. Now, that can develop into pneumonia. Spread through the whole group. We know that. We buried three people last week. My own son among them. Well, then, don't you think it's time we did something about it? Like get some food and medicine out here? That ain't possible. Morokoyo isn't far from here. I could bring a wagon back. You're staying here. Now, when we leave, we're gonna let you go. We don't want anyone to know where we are. No one. Let me just say this, sir. At one time, we were forced to fight for our convictions. Other people were hurt. We were wrongly blamed. Now we run. There's them that give a lot to get their hands on us. Please. Please let him try. Look, you people saved my life. Now, all I'm trying to do is return the favor. I've got no reason to tell anybody where you are. Would you say that on this? I swear on this Bible that I'll never tell a soul where you are. So help you God, Mr. Lancer. So help me God. <laughs> Revolver, sir. I'll leave with the first light. I'll accompany you. I'll go too. Your father's not too strong. If the time comes, you're going to have to do it for us. Got now. You meant to go back to work. Scott, we figured you was lost or stolen. Just getting ready to go out and look for the pieces. You don't look like something. Well, if it were not for these people, you'd have been looking all over the Badlands. The buzzards would have strewn me to every corner. They saved my life. Murdoch, Johnny, Jelly, Mr. Calhoun, his daughter Sarah. Mr. Calhoun, you are welcome. Come on into the house. Thank you. Maria! Put some coffee on. Anyway, there are these uh, 25 Paiutes stranded out there. Too sick to make it across the Badlands, and since they saved my skin, I figured I'd go back there with these two missionaries and take them some food and medical supplies. Now, I... Uh, could pay for it out of my own personal wages, but I thought perhaps the house would like to contribute a share. After all, uh, you did get me back. <laughs> yes. Well, it's a bad exchange, but we're obligated. Mm -hmm. We'll load up a wagon after we eat. Uh, Mr. Calhoun? Uh, here. We are grateful, oh Lord, for this providence. We ask your forgiveness for our sins. Sloth, coveting, lying, and we hope that in thine eyes on occasion these things are forgivable. Amen. 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 Now, come on, let's eat. Teresa, maybe you could find some comfortable clothes for this young woman. And while we're loading the wagon, Scott, maybe you could go into town for some supplies, medical supplies and produce and all that. Good Samaritans, all of you. I'll go with you, son. As soon as we're gone, the less we'll have imposed upon you. Here I am, half 
after into my first tear in six months, and I end up packing groceries to buy you. Don't burn the flower, sir. Here's the quinine, in case it's typhoid. Are you sure, sir, you didn't farm a plot outside Laramie? My wife and I gross it there. We jump around a bit. Or it could have been... I'm sure that we've never met before. Uh, you can forget this coffee, but vegetables, as much as you can provide. Home jarred as well as airtight. I have green beans and cabbage leaves and pickled carrots. A good balance with beef to ward off scurvy. We can unload most of this on the Indians. I was about to throw it out. Keep your voice down. Maybe we can get rid of the chocolate. Mites are getting into it. Oh, oh yeah, you yeah, yeah, put those it. here in the crate. Yeah. Oh, stop your squawking before I fricassee every one of you. Yeah. Hey, Johnny, I think uh, I'll be leaving in a few minutes. I'll see you on Wednesday. Well, are you sure you don't want me to come with you? Oh, don't be silly, Jolly. I'll be fine. Hey, hi. More feed. I wish I could give you some fresh milk to take back to those Paiute kids, but they'd be spoiled by the time you got there. Well, Mr. Lancer, I hope that someday I'll be able to repay you for all this. Well, no need for that, Mr. Calhoun. No burden on us. We're just glad we're in a position to help out. And if I uh, don't see you, if I get back from Stockton, good luck with those Indian children. Thank you, sir. was in my store a couple hours back. Oh? He used to stump towns in Colorado, preaching to high heaven. That was Sundays. Weekdays, he worked in the silver mine, Cripple Creek. That's where my Henry heard him preach. Uh, just hold your voices down, please. What was the man's name, and what was he wanted for? Tell him. I will, if you just keep out of it. He organized the miners two years back, and they struck because of working conditions. When the mine owners brung in the vigilantes and hired guns... I told you to keep out of it! The miners rioted. You're not talking about the Cripple Creek Massacre. Nothing else but. What's the man's name? My Henry isn't good at names, but he never forgets a face. A dozen people were killed in that fracas. And there's a price on this man's head. Is this a man? That's him. That's no mistake. No, no, no mistake. What about him. these other two? Were they with him? No. He didn't this is the last time I'm going to tell you to shut up. He came with Scott Lancer, and they headed back to the ranch. Now, I want it clear understood, Sheriff. I brought you this information. You rest assured, Mr. Wilk. This man is Calhoun. You'll be duly rewarded. Now, in the meantime, you keep this thing quiet. Some of his men may be around here. He tells me that these are great laying hens. They ought to keep you in fresh eggs all the way to Canada. So, if the people get hungry, I'll let them get over anxious and stew them. All right? You don't say much, Sarah. I get the feeling you don't like me. Well, that's not true. You're, you're all real generous people. I'd like to live in a house like this. Doesn't take much. Find the right man. Start breaking ground. No. For me, that kind of life could never happen. Are you saying this man killed four men? The miners were pinned in the main galley. And he let them out of there in a brazen charge for escape and shot the men down right there in front of most everybody in town. And two of them were Deputy Lawman. 
You know, something for Dooley Frock Parsons, I always have been suspicious of any man that spouts the scriptures. They've been on the run for two years. Shot their way out of Colorado, and we lost track of them in eastern California. What do you think you're going to do? Well, we'll we'll follow this fellow here, and we'll apprehend them all. It's uh, where I need your help. You mean to say you really think that Scott's going to lead you to him? After they saved his life, Sheriff? Well, he ain't got a choice. It's the law. The law. Scott will be the first one to understand that. Oh, hello, Sheriff. Didn't see you come in. Are you running for election? Got me in trouble. Need a couple of that bottles of that good sherry for medicinal purposes. Sheriff, let me. Brother, you ever hear of a place called Cripple Creek? No, what is it? Oh, it's a small mining town up in uh, Colorado. A couple years back, about 12 people got shot up. Remind me to stay out of small mining towns. Scott. Johnny, really, I don't have time right now for a history lesson. I'll come back later. It's over. I don't believe this. I mean, they can't be involved in this. They're killers. All of them. Women and children, too, Sheriff? The law isn't concerned with them. Only with the men folk. It's your duty to help apprehend them. Sheriff. Leave us a good trail tomorrow. We'll follow with a big posse. No. Nobody's following us. Now, I don't know anything about your cripple, whatever it is. I only know one thing, that those people saved my life and they didn't have to. They're wanted criminals. Now, you're a landed people. You've got a responsibility here. Sheriff, look, why don't you let me handle this peacefully and quietly, huh? Look, look Scott is our only chance. Look, if those people see this badge, they're going to get suspicious. What do you say we go out the back way? All right. I guess you're right. Come on. I'll handle the case for you. Don't worry about it. We'll get a posse together name tomorrow, right? Now, Scott, you don't figure on going back alone with those murderers, do you? That's exactly what I figured to do. Well, but they killed 12 people up there in Cripple Creek. All the time, they're mouthing the Gospels. You don't think they're going to let you go. Your what? turn. All right, Johnny, it's your turn. What do you got to say? Only what Murdoch would say. Those people can't run forever. That's very good, because that's exactly what he would say. <laughs> well, why don't you wait till tomorrow, huh? Till he gets back. Well... Paul thinks we should leave while there's still a couple of hours of daylight left. Well, you know, you're kind of tired. I think you'd make better time if you were to wait till tomorrow morning. Well, does that sound right to you, Mr. Lancer? Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's a good idea. You only use a little rest. Start first thing in the morning. Well, uh, well, you have a minute. Could you help me tie down the chicken crates? Sure. Johnny, whatever happens, don't follow us. I don't understand this kind of departure. My brother, my father, and about a half a dozen hands that want to go with us. You want that? No, I don't. You don't have to worry about Jelly. He's all right. I'm going to need him, too. Get in the front. What's 
all the noise? Just a man doing what he has to do. What do you mean? Oh. Why don't you go on back to bed? I'll talk to you in the morning. Okay. Good night. Good night. Everything and leave Jackson and his boys sure. and tell them to bring their shotguns. And, and tell the widow Evans, if she ever wants that son of hers to be a man, he'll come along too. Sure. There. There. 36 on the posse. That ought to be enough to handle any bunch of mine. Sheriff, I got something to tell you. Yeah, what is it? You can forget about that posse. Because as a law abiding citizen of this community, I came out here to tell you something. My brother, Scott, did a terrible, terrible thing. Uh, maybe a misdemeanor. I can't be bothered with... We... Scott? Scott. He took off late last night. With them vicious killers. We're not ready yet. Well, I'm sorry Sheriff. about that. <laughs> what is it? What is it? Mr. Lancer, don't you people eat any of those greens your brother bought? Why not? They've gone bad. Real bad. The Otis is bought some day before yesterday. Doc Mork just came by to warn us. They've got botulum or something in it. Deadly poison. We didn't know. Little Willie Otis died of it this morning. smuggling supplies for killers. Right. You know what they're going to do as soon as we get there? They're going to cut our throats. For. I want them to follow us. Look at them tracks. Well, this is going to be easier than pie. Yeah, right now it's easy. You should have let me bring more men. There's no time. You ever tracked before, Sam? I, uh, I got an engine usually read signs for me, but we left in such a hurry I didn't have a chance to get a hold of them. What about you? Me? Well, I've done a lot of hunting, uh, rabbits and, and deer, uh, even a bear once. I'm talking about a man. What about a man? Well, uh, actually, it. Uh, well, come on. <laughs>
They must have gone down the creek bed to hide their tracks. Pretty tricky, huh? Leif, you head downstream and see where they come out. Seth, you go upstream and do likewise. my brother. What's that mean? Well, that means... Let me go that way. Yes, man, I'm gonna make you the tastiest unfattening conglomeration you ever put in your mouth. Vegetable base, of course. Where's father? Well, he's out there checking, making sure we're not followed. I may be very sensitive, but I get the strong impression that he doesn't trust me. Well, he's trying to. It's hard for him. He likes you. Sarah. When you people get to Canada, well, if you get to Canada, what are you going to do? What's going to happen to you? My life's been well planned. But your father said that you've been driven like cattle. Now, well, uh, I'm not uh, prying into your life. Well, it's just that I'm worried about your people, mainly about you. It's just not right. I mean, people don't have to run all their lives. We've been running for a long time now. All the way from a place in Colorado. I've been frightened so long, it doesn't even hurt anymore. I just look around real quick without any feeling inside. And if it's hunting me, I kill it. And if it's a friend, I feed it. and talk to me. Now, I can't help you unless I know what's going on. Now, all I know is you people have a real problem. Now, trust me and talk to me. Talk to me. Mr. Lancer. This uh, sack of flour must have fallen off the wagon back there. And it makes ideal sign for anybody who might be tracking us. Mr. Calhoun. Are you saying that... I'm not saying anything, son. I'm not saying you did it or your friend over there. But if we've been this careless all the way, perhaps other sacks of flour have fallen off. Don't you think it's about time you started to trust somebody? Paul! That answer your question about trusting somebody? right now. No, you're not. We're moving out. We can lose them at dark. Mr. Calhoun, I don't care what you think, but we covered our tracks. Did we?
are you doing? We're gonna lose them. We gotta keep moving until after dark. Doesn't look like we're gonna make it. Well, then we fight. You know something, Mr. Calhoun? For a religious man, you seem to have an awful lot of violence eating away at you. I've had to learn. There are many things that have happened, Mr. Lancer, that you're not aware of. You want to tell me about them? No. There's a block and tackle under the front seat. Get it. Been gone. About 45 minutes to an hour. Then we ought to be up with them before night. Yeah, maybe. That is, if you keep out slicker than that brother of yours. Come on, Sam. Said. You didn't cut the branch too far from the road, did you? No more than 10 feet. Think it's gonna work? Well, I don't know. But I know one thing. We won't have to wait long to find out. Okay, let's go! I'd like you to meet my friend, Jelly Hoskins. Everybody, this is my friend, Jelly Hoskins. Hi. Without him, we never would have succeeded. Well, uh, everybody help unload this wagon now, but don't anybody eat anything until I say so. Because I'm going to build you the sweetest vegetable stew you ever laid eyes on. You better get inside, Mary. Come on. Uh, all right, now watch those chickens. Come on. Somebody get a hand there. We were trailed last night by riders. I may have lost them, but just in case, you better put a sentinel back there. Right. Sarah, now why don't you let me take that one? You've done enough man's work in the last 48 hours. Let's see you do something like a lady. Like riding her on jelly while he's doing that cooking because he can't cook as well as he thinks he can. Ah, yes, sir. Bellies that's been empty for too long don't like too much food all at once. That's why I brought my own dried apricots. Now, that's one piece for all of you till I get the main course going. 
Now, you all get lost while Tilly and I cook up storms. You two. Yes, oh boy. Easy now. I want you to take all this right down. Very fast now. <coughs> tastes awful, I'll admit. It. The worse it tastes, the better it is for you. You just make it comfortable. I'll be back in a little while and check on it. Ah, it's gonna be fine. Oh, that's better. Now, how would you feel about maybe just a hint more cabbage? Well, I like cabbage with corned beef, but... Do you want to take over? Oh, no, it smells just fine. But don't you think it needs just a little more beef? Now, I'm the chef around here, and I say when it needs more beef. It needs more beef. If this is a gift, I think I should tell you that I've already got one. What's it for? Or should I ask, what was it for? If I'd had to, I would have killed you with it. Why tell me about it now? I guess because I saw your world. How pretty and sunlit and warm it was. So you don't have to tell me anymore. But I do, Scott. We're so far away. We're so far away. We're never so far away. That we can't get back if we trust someone. All right, all right. A little quiet around here. I declare this stew at its pinnacle. So everybody form a line. Looks like Jelly's ready with that food. I better go see what I can do. and we tried to cover our trail. Hide yourselves! Wait a minute, give me a chance to talk. 
said they hadn't come to arrest you people. Sure. I should welcome them with open arms and let 40 other men come streaming in here. Calhoun! Can you hear me? God, will you tell them to stop shooting? I did not understand you, Mr. Lancer. Sarah, a lot of good people are going to be killed for no reason. Now, my brother wouldn't lie. All men lie. This was going to be my day off. Open up your mind long enough to listen to me. Don't you think that's asking a little too much of her? If I'd come here looking for a reward in the first place, would I have gone through all the trouble of hauling that big wagon up here? I could have turned you and your father over to the sheriff, brought a posse up here by myself. Now, doesn't that make more sense? Think about it. to get through to men like that. Tell them to stop shooting! The reason I brought that food up here is because I was beholding to you people. Sarah, I liked you. You've seen the way I live. Do you think I need to scrounge around for saddle tramp money? Do you want more blood on that ground out there? Well, you can stop it. All you have to do is cut me loose. Believe in someone, Sarah. Trust in someone, just once. Because if trust is beyond you, then you are too far away. Too far away to ever get back. trust that kept you alive long enough to hear it. Maybe you should think about that, Mr. Calhoun. Everything worked out all right this time, but how many more times will it work out? Pretty soon there won't be enough of you left to make it worth running. There's no one that'll help us. Well, my father could try. He knows the lieutenant governor. It's been two years, sir. Two years is a long time. 
now maybe people can look at it a little differently, with more understanding. We'll talk on it. Because there's going to be play for everybody. In response to your telegram, I've spoken to the governor, and he's agreed to review the Cripple Creek incident in light of more current evidence of criminal provocation. He can promise nothing at this time, but should these new facts be corroborated, amnesty would be granted to all of the miners involved. Arthur L. Chambers, Lieutenant Governor. That's not all I could wish for, but there's hope. Hope. And trust. I'm afraid that for a while there, some of us had forgotten the meaning of those words. Well, inasmuch as this time I can guarantee the beef is prime and the vegetables fresh, I suggest we join the barbecue. Thank you. <laughs>